right. Thank you so much for the introduction. I am really excited to have the chance to share some ideas with, uh, with the site community. And uh, over the course of the next 45 minutes or so, I hope that uh, you will find some of these pieces interesting to you in a number of different ways. I would ask that people be uh, fairly close to the chat. I will be asking several times for people to, to share ideas on that, on that front. Uh, so as we get into this, let's first note that sometimes it's good to remind yourself using a slide. Thank you very much. So with that, we have the, the less than perfect, but far better than nothing, Google Slides captions. Uh, and so if you're into one really, really long sentence as, as for a presentation, then perhaps you know, this will be just perfect for you. Uh, you'll see a lot of images in my, in my presentation. I'm, I'm very much into how images can be a part of, of really dynamic learning. Uh, and for those of you out there with uh, say library backgrounds, I always get them from sources for which they are legally available for free reuse and I cite them. Thank you very much. Okay, with that, I wanna, I wanna say thank you to the, uh, the site team for inviting a practitioner to, uh, to speak as part of the conference. Um, I do believe that the, the distinction between uh, practitioner and teacher researcher is, is a bit of a false one in many ways. Uh, it, it, is, it is very much the case, of course, that, that teachers to teach well should be asking good questions and, and, and looking at data in interesting ways. And of course, teacher educators are also teachers working to inspire their people to see new possibilities for themselves as well. So it is, it is certainly my hope that over, over the course of the talk, you will find things that are specifically useful to what you do. So with that, I'd like to, I'd like to start from, from you know, the idea of like, what, what is it that we should focus on? Well, uh, my, my interest is on, first of all, teaching and fixed mindsets as a part. We, as educators, we, we preach all the time to our students about the importance of, of a growth mindset. Uh, and yet, a lot of teachers are in a space where they feel like, you know, so I'm, I'm a pretty good teacher, or I, I'm, I'm a good teacher, or, or I do really well with this. And, and, and they see that from the perspective of that's the way that is, and not so much I can get better. And so I want, I want to look at how we think about improvement as a part of how we look at what we do at this time. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through an activity that I, I like to do with educators. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have five different images on the screen. Each one will only be there for about five seconds. And uh, your job after I show you these five is to add to the, the chat a common thread for, for what you see. So you look at these five, you, whatever common thread you see, I would like you to add that to the chat. Uh, but of course, wait until we've had the five pictures. So here we go, here is the first image. And the second. The third. The fourth. And the fifth. All right, if you would in the chat, what, what, common thread do you see among those five pictures? You see these, you're thinking about kind of the different pieces, what's there? All right, we start warmth, circles, good photography skills, nice light, simple pleasures, energy, in focus. All right, all right, some, some good thoughts coming in there. And, and, and my thinking is that, that as we get farther and farther into it, more and more people draw, not just from, from what they saw, but from what they see in, in the chat as well. So vibrant, you know, a central sing, single image, uh, inspiration, excitement, and joy. Uh, you, you guys are diversity. Awesome, awesome. So you guys are, are, are very much in the space of looking at these and, 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 and seeing a lot of different things based on who you are, which is, of course, part of, part of how that works. Now, I will, I will tell you what it is that prompted me to pick, to pick these five pictures. So, so the common thread for me was that all five of these pictures are cool. Now, my guess is that you hear that and you think, wow, that is profoundly disappointing. I was looking for something much more interesting from, from you, sir. And, and fair enough, um, but let's, let's take a look back through these pictures and work with the idea of cool from the standpoint of, of who we are as educators. 
isn't it cool when a kid walks into a learning space, whether that is online or in a classroom, and is confident that the teacher will be able to describe things in different ways so they're not locked into, I didn't get what you said, but instead they know that's a teacher who will say, let's look at it from this angle. Hey, think about it this way, that that confidence is there that for the student that they can learn from the teacher. Isn't that cool? Isn't it cool when in a sea of unremarkable experiences, a child walks into a learning space clicks into a learning space and they know something interesting will be there because that teacher goes to the trouble of crafting an interesting experience for his or her students every single day or often enough that, that, that students can expect it. Isn't it cool when that one student just starts to pay attention, hmm? right? Isn't it cool when you have that sweet anticipation that something you are about to try is going to work for a student. This is, this is like this hard nut to crack, right? The kids had a bad attitude all year and yet you've been trying and trying and trying and chipping away and chipping away and a thing you are about to do, you are confident is gonna work. And that anticipation is something that's very, very cool. And isn't it cool when as a teacher, you understand that little things make you better. Little things allow you to become better as a teacher and that is very important for how you see yourself in terms of your own professional growth. Whether you are a practicing teacher at a school, you are a teacher educator at a college, it doesn't matter. Little things make us better. So as by way of an example, you know, I can look back at these five pictures that I showed you and say, so in, in looking at these pictures, you know, did you get it right? Did you get it right? Did you identify what I found to be the, the common thread? And, and I would hope that if I asked that, you would, you would feel like that's just not the right question. You, you didn't ask that question. What you asked for was not your common thread, it was a common thread. And that's my point. Because when you as a teacher ask the question and, and any variant on, do you know the right answer? What happens? Are you, are you validating who does and doesn't know the answer in the room? Typically not. What you're watching is, is a group of people defer to the three or four kids or students who always get the right answer. That's what happens when you ask, do you know the right answer? And if that's the case, then a slight change of wording can make a big difference in how engaged people will be, whether they're getting that, that, that interactive practice of discussing ideas such that they are developing their confidence for, for conversation with the topic. All of these pieces are, are part of, of a very small change in wording. And so little things become very important for how we begin to see what it is we do to get better and better and better as educators. Now, in thinking along those lines, it becomes clear very quickly that if that is the case, then loads of teachers are that close to being much better because if you add a little thing each day, each day, each day, obviously you get better in, in, in mere weeks, right? And so that's a simple thought. But on the other hand, so many people are in a space of seeing their work you know, quite, quite consistently over time that, that the idea of adding some small thing each day actually is, is a bit novel for them. Now, let's, uh, let's, let's use another example on this front. Let's, let's say it's time for class to start. It's time for class to start. All right, and, and here we go. Here's what the teacher says. All right, everybody, the bell is rung. I'd like you to settle down and we will now go over the main points of yesterday's class. Uh, now, if, uh, well, hopefully you don't use that voice, but, but when thinking about starting class, what messages are you giving? Because there's what you say and what the students hear. And, and if what you say is settle down, what they might be hearing is, ooh, this is going to be a painfully tedious passive experience, right? That may be what they hear. Um, much more damaging, I would say, is, is the, I will now go over the main points of yesterday's class, which seems to be a perfectly good thing, right? The, the teacher is trying to make sure that people are up to speed on the things that are important and, and, and that leads them into what we'll, we will cover today in, in a useful way. That's, that's in the teacher's head. I will now go over to the main point, uh, main points of yesterday's class may sound to the students like, hey, you don't need to pay attention today because I'll summarize it for you tomorrow. Probably not what the teacher means or what one would assume. And, and consequently, we have to kind of be in that space of knowing you know, what we say about our work, what we say about what our ex expectations are for our students, maybe sending messages that are unintended. 
And, and that's, that's interesting. So let, let's imagine a different way of starting class. So let's say you are, you are training your, your, your teacher candidates, right? And, and you know, you're ready to start class, you know, and, and the time comes. I'm like, all right, everybody, here we go. What I want you to do is turn to your elbow buddy or your, your breakout room buddy. And your job is to explain to each other how what we did in the previous class relates to this picture. How does it relate to this picture? Go. Now, in looking at this picture, the first thing I think you would probably uh, realize is that this is not something that has any obvious connection to your last class. The chances in your last class that you covered burying Cadillacs in the West Texas sand to let people paint them, that, that's a minimal chance of, of that being, you know, any kind of accurate kind of prediction there. So if, if what instead we have is something that has no obvious connection to the last class, we are therefore setting aside the what is the right answer question, which, which creates that passive environment for so many of the students. And we're inviting them to just talk about how they see things. Maybe they're talking about the, the aspects of, of, of what you discussed um, that, that, are, that are obvious to, to people because they can be seen. It's like the part of the car that's above the ground, uh, as opposed to these underlying issues that, that we don't talk about as much, which is the part of whatever it might be, getting a chance Hello. for the... Hello, welcome. All right. Uh, whatever it might be, getting, getting the opportunity to, to have students describe their thinking about what it is that they're, they're, they're seeing, what it is that they recall from the previous class, that's your chance to see where they are. And so, so the teacher essentially goes from, from spoon feeding the students a bunch of review to being the person who just makes sure they don't forget anything important and invites a creative exploration of how we think about those concepts along the way. It's a little thing, it's a little thing. And yet in doing something like that, we are creating a very different environment, one that arguably is a lot more effective for a lot of the students. Now, another way to think about what's, what's possible in the classroom is, is how we work to vary the voice of uh, of, of the teaching, right? So, so in many classrooms, the teacher is, is obviously the driving force and, and that person talks a lot. And so if what happens instead is we are, we are working to try to get other voices as a part of it, we are using, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, these kinds of, you know, video conferencing technologies or video technologies to allow folks to see things from other points of view, that's quite powerful as well especially if it, if it addresses your, your DEI concerns about what's possible in the classroom as well. I think that the more we can get a, a variety of, of perspectives in front of our, our students, the more we can get them to begin to see possibilities within themselves. I'm gonna play for you a little video. Uh, this video is in the library uh, that, uh, of videos that my little nonprofit runs. My little nonprofit is Next Vista for Learning, right? I'm, I'm a former Japanese language high school teacher. Um, it's kind of a fun thing to teach Japanese language. The kids have no preconceptions about their ability. They just know they like animated movies. So they show up. Um, uh, and I was then a principal and, and now I run this little nonprofit that's focused on this library. And so we get some really clever little videos from, from teachers and students around the world. So this one is called Text Evidence. Let's, let's watch this real quick, see what you think. students might use text evidence. That's right, Steve. Text evidence is the proof you find in text to help support your answer. What's the proof of the text that say? According to the text, the author says, or based on what I read, a bear searched and searched for berries, but snow was beginning to fall and no more berries were around. Why is the bear tired? According to the text, Snow was beginning to fall. That means it is almost time for the bear to hibernate. Did you get a, a different idea of this? Yes, the bear is searching and searching. So I know he is walking around working hard while he is looking for more food. Oh, so using the text can help us answer a question? 
Finding evidence can prove what we think? Using text evidence is very important. It lets us know you're not just guessing. From now on, I will use text evidence to prove my answer. I guess we'll let you off the warning this time. All right, if you would, in the chat, what, what, is, uh, what is it that comes to mind watching this video? What, what are some impressions of this video that, that strike you with, with this? <laughs> nice, Brenda. That's awesome. All right. Get a smiley from Peggy. Self-paced learning. All right. All right. Thanks, Allison. What else? They're learning as they act. Yes, these kids own the learning. We're seeing a very active thing happening, right? Yeah, the students are having fun with the task. The kids get it. They do. How many how many high school teachers have I shown this video to who are like, my kids need that uh, need that video right there. Confidence and knowledge, multimodal. Nice, Christine. Communicating, they understand the concept. Right, right, right. You know, you 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 always get some folks who will will watch. You know, some some teachers who will watch this and they will say. Yes, yes, that that's uh, yes, yes. But 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 how much time did it take? That time, or uh, you know. So so yeah, I, I get it. It it takes time to put videos like this together. On the other hand, will they remember it? Right. Um, and uh, and I think you know the the comment earlier about they they learn as they act from Catherine is is exactly exactly the right idea. And and, and certainly from the standpoint of of time. You know, if, if different classes are doing different kinds of videos on different concepts, it may be that many hands make light work and you end up with lots of really good resources where voices are varied and in instruction. Kids have that extra connection to the content because maybe they know somebody in the video or people in the video look like them or whatever it may be. And that's really useful, right? Because, you know, when, when, we, when we get into that space of time, we're often going down kind of the, 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 wrong, the wrong road with how we think about it. For a lot of teachers, it's like, oh, I have so much to cover in the curriculum. Time, time, you know, there's only so many minutes. And, and, and I, would, I would note that teaching is not about the number of minutes we have. It's the number of great moments that we craft. Those moments where students begin to see themselves in new ways and, and say, oh, wow, I, like, and they understand the world. And, in, 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 a, in a brand new way, they see their futures in new ways as a result of a really interesting learning activity. So, so now, you know, we, we're trying to think about how, 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 is our, how is our our thinking about our work been changing over the last year? Well, just like we're doing right now, it becomes easier and easier and easier to get a variety of voices into our learning space. So in this case, for example, uh, I was using Zoom with a, a there's this very small class that I co-teach uh, at, at a school where I do a lot of work. Um, by the way, I, I would contend that the name of the class is one of the coolest class names on the planet. Uh, it's called Creative Solutions for the Global Good. So at any rate, one of the things that we do is we work hard to try to get really fascinating people to talk to our students about this, that, or the other. In this case, we have Leo Johnson talking to us. Leo is, is a, he, he, was, he was a kid in the mid 90s when his family escaped Liberia during the Civil War there. He made it to Canada. Uh, in Canada, he was, uh, he was uh, in you know, part of a refugee community, but got his education, went to McMaster University, as a matter of fact, and, and just really, really you know, kind of did well and started this thing called Empowerment Squared. And what's Empowerment Squared about? They're building the first library and learning center in post-Civil War Liberia. Now that's pretty darn cool, right? And then of course, there's lots of interesting challenges in trying to set something in motion like that. And, and, and talking about that with the students was absolutely inspiring to these kids, right? The boys were sitting there and they were like, wow, you know, like this guy's amazing. That is a part of creating really exceptional learning experiences. We, we want to be in that space of tapping our context contacts. We have, I mean, there's, there are people in this session right now from, from all over the world, right? We, we have got people from, from Israel and from Latin America, and all over the United States, from Canada. And, and we have these, con why, why do we not, I mean, you may be doing this, but, but for many teachers, why do you not tap into the networks? You know people in other parts of the world? I do not. Do you know people who know people in other parts of the world? 
Uh, I can ask, yes. And, and then let's bring those people in. It's just a matter of using something like Zoom, which, which as of you know, a, a year ago, we're all quite used to at this point. So, so thinking about technology is not so much from the standpoint of, you know, click here, do this next, but, but what, it, what opportunities does it create to inspire students, recognizing that every time a kid is inspired, it re-energizes who we are as educators and, and how we think about what we do. If we want to be effective in any way, right, whether it, it's, it's anecdotal, whether it's measurable, I mean, like, whatever it might be, we have to kind of be in that space of knowing that we are bringing a certain energy to what we do. And, and the more we can find moments that, that everyone identifies as powerful, the more effective we are going to be. Yes, that's a hard thing to quantify, but on the other hand, I believe it makes sense. So let's, let's take it also from the standpoint of, of how do we challenge ourselves to see something more than perhaps we're creating as a team. What do I mean by that? So, so when you think about a group of teachers at a school, there's going to be some who push themselves a little more, some who push themselves a little less, and that's, that's probably a good way to describe that. You know, there, there's some distribution along, along that spectrum. Uh, and, and it may be that there are two or three or four things happening at the school that, that are really exceptional. The uh, question becomes, are those stories that are used to drive PD and PR and, and how we think about what we do? Um, in this case, what, what we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch we're gonna watch a little video that was made by uh, a, an instructor uh, at a school in in Monterey, California, and uh, and what what happened there is that they were working on possibilities for having students uh, pick something that really fascinates them and and to drive it in interesting directions. So let's see what these students have to say over the next two minutes. Here we go. I collected plastic bags and crocheted them into sleeping mats for the homeless. I wrote a book to teach non-speakers to learn Chinese. We created a series of YouTube videos explaining how to upcycle common household items into DIY projects. And how to prepare healthy dessert recipes. I organized and taught poetry workshops twice a week at a local elementary school to inspire students to use writing as a productive and healthy creative outlet. I composed music in a video series to help anyone who wanted to start composing. I volunteered at a care home where I tended to developmentally disabled clients. In order to educate kids about the importance of immunizations, I busted myths about the flu shot by filming a public service announcement and sharing it with local schools and hospitals. I raised money to donate to the water project so that people in developing countries have access to clean, disease-free water. I developed a website that shares the ideas of Taekwon Kim Gu, a Korean independence leader and world peace advocate. I organized the York student-run homework help program at Monterey Bay Charter School. I designed a web page so that hospital patients could more easily order food. I increased the awareness about the dangers of texting and driving through the hashtag X movement by creating a video and gaining signatures from team drivers. I planned and executed an iDevice workshop to help people at my local library learn how to use their iDevices. I'm making a series of videos educating people about different sexualities and romantic orientations. I created a website to inform parents that video games have the potential for deep discussions. We put on an open house to raise awareness and funds for a nonprofit organization called Star Rider that helps differently abled children and adults ride horses. All right. Like last time, I would, I would like for you to add to the chat thoughts that strike you about this video. You, you see this, you see these students talking about things they're doing. Um, what, what comes to mind for you? How does it relate to your work, if, if at all? I'm, I'd be curious about that as well. Let, let's take a couple of minutes and see what we can add uh, in, in the discussion space. Uh, so, you know, it can be a, a one or two word response. It can be uh, a sentence in, in terms of how you see things based on, on what these kids were saying. But, but what, what, things, what things happens? We see great communicators and, and youth empowerment and learning in action, intrinsic motivation. I, I like that one a lot. It's like the holy grail of learning is, is self-directed learning, right? Authentic intellectual work. Kate, awesome. All right. Uh, 
Ooh, now it's moving fast, right? Students are capable of directing their own learning. Exactly, Sherry. All right, open exploration and creativity, community-based pods and lots of good things in here. A great breadth of projects. Yes, the leadership studies class I teach to undergrads. Ooh, I want to know more about that, where they do social action projects on an issue that is important to them. AGD, we need to stay in touch. Uh, Eugene says agency and empowerment, independent goals. and Yeah, so, so lots and lots of different things are, are, are coming to the fore with this, right? Carmen talks about uh, big questions. This is what fascinates students, right? Merely validating that someone has the right answer is not inspiring. It is necessary from time to time, absolutely. But, but what changes a child's sense of the possible is much more about taking on something big, right? And, and the, the comments in the chat are very much in that space. And it's not as if we have to have, uh, you know, degrees in, you know, advanced degrees in, in engineering to be able to use tech in a way that, that, that fosters this. There, there are things to figure out as we do. The guy who wrote this, by the way, Kevin Brookhauser, um, you know, wrote a book called The 20 Time Project, which is half how you do this and half why you do it. It's a very interesting book. Um, and, uh, and by the way, I, I'm going to give you a link to get back to all of my slides. So all of the slides, the resources that you're seeing on the slides, all of that you'll get. Uh, when I say you'll get, uh, you know, it's not a threat or, or, or a prediction of understanding so much as hey, it, you'll, you'll have the, the slides to click back to if you want. There you go. Okay. So um, what, is it, what is it that technology does kind of in its cutting edge space that allows us to begin to try to drive self-directed empowered learning as well? So while I'm not, I'm not here to kind of say uh, tons about you know, specific, uh, specific tools, there is one that, that, that I mentioned because I think it, it lives in this space of, of cutting edge. So my, my guess is uh, that you have not heard of Unruler, U-N-R-U-L-R. If you have, you know, put, put a yes in the chat and I'll be like, wow, check you out. Um, Unruler is somewhere between alpha and beta. It's this little startup uh, based in Honolulu, as a matter of fact. Not a bad place to be. Um, and, and the idea with Unruler is that you, you get students communicating with each other about their learning in, in a novel way. What do I mean by novel? Well, Unruler is, is built as, as a social media tool such that students can post images related to say their pride, like, like their, their community is, is who the, the school, the teachers identify as the community. So it's not as if there are people from the outside coming in unless the teacher makes it that way. Uh, and, and they have a chance to say, okay, here's, a, here's an image. Here's what I was trying to do. They can identify goals as a part of it as well. And what, what the teachers who started using this found was that a lot of students began to encourage each other. Hey, I really like what you were doing this. I remember that as well. And they found that, that students were talking about their projects. They were talking about things that that create connections between them, say, a, say experiences as a, at a feeder school coming into that school. And, and that, that environment became a very good one for how they look at each other from the standpoint of getting ideas for, for how to push their learning forward. That's interesting, right? So that there are tools out there doing this kind of thing is, is natural enough. So what we do as educators is we get together in, in spaces like site and we say, what, what, are, what are you seeing, right? And, and here is a thing I'm seeing, that, that kind of possibility attached to a new tool that, that hopefully will, will be one that, uh, that, that really kind of takes off because it's interesting. It's interesting stuff. Now, for a lot of teachers, the idea of exploring new tools is, is, is just a, a put your head in your hands kind of experience because you look over the last year and the kinds of things that we've experienced as educators during the pandemic, and, and it's, it's all you can do to just keep breathing in and out, right? I mean, the, the, the last year on, on, on one front has been a year where more teachers have learned more technology and more about possibilities with technology than ever before. I don't think I'm engaging in hyperbole when I say that. It, but it has also been a year of incredible tragedy and stress as well, right? And, and, and I, want us, I want us to talk about this from the standpoint of our our, our teacher candidates, our students in, in education programs, and how they begin to think about who they will be as a part of a team moving forward. So I'm, I'm not typically a big fan, fan of reading a screen, but, uh, but, I'm, but I'm about to do it, and I hope that you'll forgive me doing this as well. 
So this is this is a piece from a Reddit post that I uh, that I noticed about a, about eleven months ago or so, um, and uh, here's what the person had to say. Right. So I have two kids at home, a high risk spouse who is an essential worker. I'm helping care for my eighty year old grandparents, and I'm barely keeping my head above water with digital learning. So the, I, I don't spend a lot of time on Reddit, um, but but this one this one caught my eye for a number of reasons. This this is a portion of a larger piece. First of all, hearing this, what comes to mind? So so again in the chat, please back. Like what what comes to mind for you with with this message? Is this something that that resonates uh, that 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 uh, ties you to the experiences of the people you're working with? What comes to mind for you with this idea? Uh, of just exhaustion, overwhelmed, right? It says uh, G. Knezic, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name properly, right? Drowning, Sherry, right? Just, just drowning in, in expectations and, and, and frustrations and trying to learn things that, that were new. Emotional overload, multitasking, Zoom burnout. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there, there's, there's a lot going on in, in the head and the heart of the person who said this. Now, students are really feeling this, many are classroom teachers now. I mean, yeah, and the best of circumstances, your first year of teaching is, is an absolutely physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually exhausting experience under the best of conditions. And then slap a pandemic on it, right? And, and suddenly it, it's, it's something quite different. Now, we, we think about that and we think about the frustrations that people feel and, and you know, we have natural reactions to this. How can I help? How do I reach out and and, and and, and help that person in some way? How do, I, how do I help that person see that that some of the work out there has already been done for them? They don't have to recreate wheels, things like this. That, that, is, that is a part of how we see it. But there is a complexity to it that if you are preparing teacher candidates for, I think, uh, I think it's the kind of message that may allow your, your students to avoid a really nasty uh, experience going forward. What am I talking about? Let me read you the entire post from, from, from Reddit from, that I, from which I took that particular piece. Dear overachieving teachers, stop it. You know those teachers, the ones whose identity is teacher, the ones who can't relax at home, the ones lamenting seeing their students. These people seem to want to make everyone's life miserable right now by showing admin every extra cool social thing they are doing during digital learning. And now admin thinks that everyone should do those things. Dear overachievers, stop it. I have two kids at home, a high-risk spouse who is an essential worker. I'm helping care for my 80-year-old grandparents, and I'm barely keeping my head above water with digital learning. If you want to overachieve, great, but quit making more work for the rest of us that are just trying to survive. You don't need to be super teacher right now, so back the F off. I'm so annoyed. That's a bit of a different feel than, than, than just the piece that I pulled out before. Um, Reactions in the chat, if you would. What what are what are some of the things that strike you, uh, seeing seeing this this larger context for for the comment? Now, yeah, this is anger that rubbed people the wrong way, and rightfully so. A very angry person, pressure, breaking point. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, was not well trained in ed tech prior to the pandemic. Well said, Tori. Oh, Tori, wow, you're here. It's to you. Woo. All right. And so all of all of these kind of things that are a part. Of, of what teachers will encounter, they need to know that they are going to go in schools where this is actually the driving, the driving thought. And, 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 and what is this? And note, by the way, 84% upvoted, 84%. Now the downvote blue you see there was mine, um, but 84% people upvoted. Now, what were they upvoting? Were they upvoting, you know, just, just the, the sense of frustration and, and exhaustion and, and just saying, hey, we're there for you? Or were they saying, right, other people who are doing well are making the rest of us look bad, which is a hell of a thing to say, right? I mean, if, if somebody is doing something interesting and that's reaching a child who's been needing something different, why wouldn't I as another teacher stop and say, tell me more about that. Maybe I can reach this kid with that. But in, in the complexity and the tragedy and, and the horror of a pandemic that's killed almost 600,000 Americans at this point and, and you know, millions of people around the world. We have to be prepared for complex professional environments. What we can do with technology is, is 
interesting only so much as it inspires children and how we talk about possibilities should be from the perspective of, I think a kid really made a connection as a result of this thing. This, this is what we did and tried to make it work. You know, I'd be interested in other people's thoughts on how I can make that better to help them learn to have the kind of professional conversations that mean when they step into a space and people have been teaching there for 20, 30 years, you know, there, there is a certain humility that recognizes, recognizes that those 20 to 30 year veterans may have some insights that will be valuable to them as well. I, I know that that's, that's a horrible generalization, but, but thinking through those ideas before they show up and, and get hit in the face with back the F off, you don't need to be super teacher, just, just so that they're in the space of understanding, oh, okay, that happens, it happens. And maybe, maybe my patience in, in, in hearing that will allow me to understand that that person does do some amazing things that I can learn from, even if he or she might sometimes say things that, uh, let's just say rub me the wrong way. So, so what does it mean for, for teachers and for school leaders to, to react to what's happening in, in pandemic time, right? This is a time where people have started asking really good question about what truly works, right? Is this learning activity something that truly works? Is this use of my time as an educator something that genuinely moves forward my students' ability to do the things that I'm asking them to do? Now, I do a lot of work with school leaders as well. And I talk about the idea of listening to crazy ideas. Matter of fact, you should ask for crazy ideas. Why crazy? Because if you ask for good ideas, a lot of people won't share them because they're not sure if they're good or not. But if you ask for crazy, why not? Doors open, little things, right? And, and so sometimes, you know, somebody will come along and say, you know, this is our staff room right now, right? So, so, so I, I'm looking at the staff room and I'm thinking we need to kind of shift it. And it, it really should be a lot more like, well, this. First of all, uh, yes or no in the chat, you would like your staff room to look like that. Now, I see, I see a, a yes on that front. I've got a all capitals yes from Candace on, on that as well. Oh God, yes. <laughs> that's so awesome. <laughs> all right, very much so. Only if there's a Brista back there, why not, right? Yahoo, all right, so, so you, all right. It appears we are all cut from the same wood, right? That, that's, that looks really, really cool. And so yes, crazy idea. We're not gonna change the staff room to look like this over the next three days. No, no, I got some time. It ain't gonna happen in the next three days. But could you bring in gourmet coffee once a week? How hard would that be, right? Is, is that hard? It's not. Do you have the funds for it? Probably. It shows value you know, for, for a team leader, for a departmental leader, a grade level leader, a school leader, you know, a, you know, that, that ability to say, we have enough bandwidth to think about the little things to help you out makes a difference. And so, so trying to find ways to get people into a space of saying, well, what are the crazy ideas? How, how might we do this? How might we do that? At that school where I, I co-teach the creative solutions for the global good class, uh, the, the administration uh, gave me the green light to start uh, what we call the R and D team. All right. And so at the beginning of this semester, I invited anybody on the on the faculty who was interested to just get together a total total optional thing we're going to have these conversations about what is it that we've learned during the pandemic that we want to make sure we keep going forward once we can pack the rooms again so so what what have we learned that we want to keep what have we learned right and and our folks have come up with a lot of interesting ideas on this the the r d team right and and i'll, I'll share a few of them with you uh, just, just so you can kind of be in that space of, hmm, all right, you know, let's, let's see what, what we do with this. So, for example, how can we make more possible, you know, kind of learning cool things happen beyond the, the, the bell schedule? So things like having uh, speakers pipe in from wherever they are, you know, such that, such that, you know, kids get a chance to see something really, really pretty different. That's not hard. There, there's nothing hard about the technology in that at all. It's just a matter of stopping and saying, well, what, what if we do it a little differently? Um, we talked about things like having a project center. This is actually probably going to end up being an evolution of the library at the school, where the idea is that the person who's doing this interesting project, perhaps a little along the lines of the, of the students whose projects uh, you learned about from the York School, that, that what will happen there is, is that they not only can develop that project by getting connected to the things they need, but they also learn to talk about research behind elements of their project 
in a way that gives them, even as high schoolers, the chance to start talking about uh, validity of sources and citing them appropriately. And, and why shouldn't we get them in a space where they can articulate their understanding along those lines? We talk about tech enabled service to others. So it's a pandemic. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it means say a lot of senior citizens who would have gone to a senior citizen center to use the computer to say, send email to family and friends in other parts of the world may not be able to get to the senior citizen center. Uh, and what, what might we do? Well, maybe some of our teens can connect with them via, uh, via Zoom to you know, once or twice a week so that they can, they can make sure that those folks aren't feeling the kind of oppressive loneliness that so many have experienced as a part of, of, the, of the shelter in place uh, programs or in, in different parts of the country. What, why, why not do these things? We're already oriented to service to others. And we know that just simply checking off boxes and counting the number of hours volunteered somewhere is not necessarily inspiring. So why not, right? More connections to schools internationally. Again, simple technology, Zoom or anything like it, Meet, Jitsi, whatever it might be, that this is not hard stuff. And so why not bring folks together? And we've started doing things with schools in, in South Africa and Nigeria, been talking to people in Brazil and in Pakistan and, uh, and the Philippines about some possibilities as well. Why not, right? Just why not? I mean, why, why wouldn't you have your teacher candidates talk to teacher candidates in another country to find out what kinds of things are really important to them and, and what kinds of things they face? Why not, right? We even talked about a teacher exchange. Hey, once we can all travel again, why not send somebody down to Cape Town uh, during, uh, during our break uh, and then they can send somebody to us during their break for say two to week, two or three weeks and meet with our students and experience life over here and we'll give them a place to stay. Why not? Well, there's a cost to an air, a flight. Yeah, but if you've reduced the cost of this kind of thing to just a flight, is that worth it? I mean, is, is it worth it to bring somebody to your school in that fashion? I'm thinking so. And, and that's, that's where we're going with these ideas. And, and hopefully everybody's kind of in that space. Now, to, to wind things down, I would also say that during the pandemic, we've gotten back to, to the basics of what we do, the stuff that has always been important. Hey, there's a tricycle on the screen, indeed. Um, why is it there? Ha thank you for asking. So, so what this is, is I have a friend in Wisconsin, Sue, whose grandson has cerebral palsy. Now, if you know anything about cerebral palsy, one of the things you, you know is that the exercise you get as a young child is very important for determining the amount of mobility that you will experience as you grow older. And so one of the things they wanted Sue's grandson to do is to ride a tricycle, exercise his little leg muscles, right? And that's, that makes sense, right? Well, the child didn't want to do it. Well, why, why not? Because it hurt. Oh, all right. So, so what do you do? The kid needs to exercise his muscle, muscles, but it hurts. And they could not get the, the, the kiddo to do this. And they were talking about this with a teacher and the teacher said, oh, no, 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 let, let me try, let me try. Hey, why don't you ride the tricycle? I don't want to, it hurts. No, 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 it's actually not about you. What I want you to do is to give puppy a ride. How good is that? How good is that moment, right? How good is it when, as a teacher, how cool is it when, as a teacher, we tap into the creativity that is within us? Creativity is not something you have or don't have. It's something you use or don't use. And, and how cool is it when we have a moment where a teacher allows for some kind of little breakthrough through something like this? These are the things that have always mattered. The creative insights that allow us to reach that next student. And, and we're, we're learning to do this in new ways that, that, are, that are very powerful. And, and by taking the opportunity to say, let, let's be prepared for the complex professional environments that, uh, that, that you're going to enter. Uh, but let's, let's just be ready, right? So to, to use our insights in ways that are really, really powerful. Um, I'd like to do one quick thing with you real quick. I, I've got a, a one sentence, uh, one sentence. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually put this in the chat. Uh, it's, it is a one question survey. There you go. There's the link in the chat. And, and I'd appreciate it if you would, if you would just, just one, one thing, all right? So, so it's on a one to 10. Actually, let me, let me tell you real quick. On a one to 10, how useful was this talk? Do, do not grade inflate me. If it was good, give it a five. That's fine, right? If it changed your life, 10, all right? Uh, if you're like, oh man, I could have been balling socks, you know, a one, all right? You know, so, so, so add that to, uh, uh, you know, some of you putting in the chat, that's great. Thank you very much. Um, I do want us to, to do this in the form 
for a particular reason. You know, you might say, well, why? Is it because you want to get, you know, kind of people's ideas on this? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, that's part of it, but, but also because uh, I, I think it's important to look at this kind of data. And you say, well, okay, yeah, but when are you really going to look at this? Um, well, the answer to that is right now. So, so let's take a look. All right, so I'm doing well. All right, so, so, so the numbers look good. Um, but, but I will add this. Anything that, that moves towards the left side of the screen, that's an opportunity to learn. So if somebody has a two or a three or something like this over here, and I can, I can understand why, what is it about the talk that, that didn't work for, for well for you? Was, was there something that I was missing in it that, that right, right, that, that, that allows me to kind of be in that space of saying, how do I improve what I do? How do I improve it? And so, you know, if you're willing to toss in comments, you know, those suggestions, I can get better at what I do. And by modeling this kind of like immediate uh, evaluation, you know, I think we can get our, 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 our students who are to be teachers in, into that humility of I can always learn. Little things make me better. So good, good. Thank you guys for, for that. All right, some, uh, some last thoughts real quick. I, I write a blog uh, and uh, how often do I write it? Multiple times a year. Thank you very much. Uh, that's at rushtonh.com, R-U-S-H-T-O-N-H.com. There's a link there to my writing as well. Um, a lot of the ideas from this talk are from a book called Making Your Teaching Something Special. It's 50 very short chapters, you know, the idea that two to three pages where the idea is that you could be wolfing down lunch and be like, hmm, maybe I'll try that in the afternoon. Little things make us better. Uh, if you have some questions, I am going to, I'm going to be doing a, a post keynote uh, Q&A with, with anyone interested. I would love to share ideas with you if, uh, if that is something that, that works. There are also many other wonderful sessions for you to catch as well. So. So uh, if you join me, great. Here is how to stay in touch with me, and I hope many of you will. Uh, there are, uh, there are, are a number of different ways to do so. First, uh, via email, uh, I'm, I'm rh at nextvista.org, and I answer every email I get eventually, right? Um, these slides, you can, I'm going to put the, the link to those in the chat, uh, and just a little bit about some of the other pieces that are there real quick. Uh, loads and loads of, uh, of resources at nextvista.org slash resources. Uh, the five-day teacher challenge sounds like some kind of a cleanse. Actually, what that is, is, uh, is a set of blog posts where there are two possibilities and say colleagues would say, I'll try this one, you try that one, and then tomorrow we'll talk about it together. Um, the newsletter I put out once a month, uh, all, all sorts of free things you might want to watch or read or try, uh, ideas related to things that I've encountered. Uh, and, and video contests that we run inviting teachers. Your students, by the way, are, are, are welcome to do this as well, just to share short little insights that might inspire students and teachers around the world uh, as part of our contest. I hope that that's something you'll, you'll, you'll take a, a look at. So with that, it is almost 8 a.m. on the Pacific Coast where I am. The sun has come out happily. Uh, and I hope that, that something in this session has proven uh, interesting to you in some fashion. I end my newsletter with the same line every month and I will finish this talk with the same line now. May you inspire and be inspired each and every day. Thank you so much for being part of this today.